Oh, the member's time has expired. Oh, Adrian Ruafi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, yesterday we heard in this House from Anne Tolley, the Honourable Anne Tolley, who said the privately run prison in Mount Eden is exceeding the record of our state run prison. And I want to talk about why she might think that. She's wrong, of course. And here's the issues about this, the Circo run prison in Mount Eden. And I've been talking to some uh, prison, some corrections officers, and they say, tell me that this is a hot topic of conversation over the last two weeks. And I want to follow on from my colleague, uh, Calvin Davis, and reinforce what he has said, uh, but giving information from uh, corrections officers. They tell me that it's an unfair comparison because uh, Circo has the ability to transfer prisoners, inmates, out of Mount Eden for whatever reason they want. So if they have a difficult uh, uh, inmate, they, all they have to do is transfer that, that inmate to another, to another prison. They can transfer inmates to uh, for being injured in a fight club. They can do that. And that presents, sir, uh, when you're giving information that the minister gave yesterday, an unbalanced view of what's actually happening in the Circo run uh, prison. Here's some more information. I'm told that the one, the ratio in high um, in, in low level security uh, state run prisons is one uh, one to 20. In high security, one to 15. In the Circo run prison, it is one to 50. And they can get away with that because they don't do everything that state run prisons do. For example, when uh, the inmates are let into the exercise area, the doors are automatically opened in the Circo prison and the inmates come out and there are no staff on the floor with them. And, if you, uh, and in state-run prisons, there is a requirement that the officers be in the exercise area. That way, they can see what the inmates are up to. They can monitor what's going on. This is a problem with Circo-run uh, uh, prison in Mount Eden. They are not there to see what's going on. And that's a problem that this government has failed to address. And so we find ourselves in a situation today where uh, these things have come to light and the minister who is on, his, on the back foot on this issue is, is trying to manage uh, what's happening out there in the media. And I, I uh, say to the members opposite that that's just not good enough for our uh, people that are in, uh, in those prisons. They deserve better. They do not deserve, as uh, Calvin Davis pointed out, to be uh, dropped over a, a balcony, uh, unsighted because the uh, staff are just not in 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 that area for it to be seen by them. Uh, I'm also told that uh, they do not incident report on everything. There's a requirement in state-run uh, prisons that every uh, situation that they encounter, uh, there's a suspicion of communications with, uh, 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 with cell phones, etc. There's a, if there's a, a suspicion of contraband, they have to deal, they have to report it. And so it's little wonder that we see that the Minister, uh, Minister Tolley can stand in this House and say that, but I say to the House that is a manipulation of those figures because it's not a fair play, uh, uh, not a fair um, playing field. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Matthew, Matt Ducey. Thank you, Mr Speaker.